Hi, everyone. This is Michael Reardon. I'm here again with my good friend and colleague, Joe Dargavage. Joe and I are talking about foreign flag vessels entering the United States for the first time. In our first little primer, we talked about how important preparations are. And, and in that vein, we really focused on the B-1, B-2 visas, which are more challenging than they've ever been. Joe, what are the next steps in preparing for coming into the United States if you're a captain or the first mate or you know even someone that's uh sort of helping out in the in the planning of entering the united states yeah you know it's very important because we're, we're talking about two different uh processes you, we've talked about the crew now let's talk about the actual vessel itself a little bit with the vessel and, and the clearance of the vessel there are a few documents that are very important uh, one of them being a cofer any vessel above 300 gross tons entering the the waters of the United States will need a COFR. Any vessel above 400 gross tons will also need a non-tank vessel response plan. So, Joe, we're, we're just talking about the COFR and the NTVRP. COFR is Certificate of Financial Responsibility. NTVRP is non-tank vessel response plan. What are those for? Uh, you know, your COFR is, is, is going to show that the owners of the vessel have enough financial responsibility to handle anything that may go drastically wrong while you're in the waters of the United States. Uh, along with the non-tank vessel response plan is your emergency plan uh, to handle such situations. So they kind of two, two kind of go hand in hand. Okay. And uh, they are very important and, and they are required before you okay. enter. So we have uh, the COFR, uh, which is basically pollution insurance, the NTVRP, which is a cleanup plan, What's next? Uh, then it's very important uh, is your ENOA, uh, which is your electronic notice of arrival. Uh, coming from, from foreign, it must be uh, uh, applied for 96 hours ahead of time online. If you're coming from the Bahamas, it's 24 hours. And what that is, is that is now uh, the government and especially the Customs and Border Patrols go to of everything there is to know about that yacht as well as the crew and guests are on that yacht uh, before it enters. And it, the, that one particular uh, document, if you will, will go to many different agencies, uh, from agriculture to trash to customs to immigration. So filling out that document and getting that approval is really probably one of the most important steps for bringing a yacht into the United States. If and you where, do not how, do your ENOA, you will, you will be stopped immediately by the Coast Guard. Sorry for interrupting, but how and where, you know, how, what's the process of filling out an ENOA? Uh, the, the ENOA is, is not too difficult. It can be found online. It is tedious. Uh, so we recommend that um, uh, someone uh, with uh, of high importance on your yacht, whether it's the captain or, or, the, or, or the first officer doing the ENOA or hiring an agency like ours to handle it for you. Right. Okay, great. So the other thing that we had talked about previously that's really important, it's kind of so fundamental, but some people might forget. It's also if you've been in Europe or anywhere else a long time, you got to make sure your insurance policy allows the geographical limit of coming to the United States and that all the issues around crew health insurance and liability and all that stuff are handled. That's usually just a phone call to the insurance agent but that's another thing that might even be handled when you ask them to help with the COFR. Any, any thoughts or comments on that? No, I 100% uh, agree. They are getting stricter on that, Michael, not just here in the United States, but other countries. So obviously having, you know, all your ducks in a row when it comes to, to your to insurance. Um, absolutely. This has been part two of a three part series in foreign flag yachts entering the United States for the first time. I'm Michael Reardon, Reardon Yacht Consulting. This is Joe Dargavage with United Island and Yacht. And we'll be back with part three and share with you what to do when the boat actually comes into the United States. Joe, thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Michael.